energy it can be understood by the uh, uh, by the curves that we have in figure 3.19 so here it's clearly shown what is the magnetic co-energy and which one is the magnetic energy so if you have a non-linear BH curve it is clear from figure 3.19 that the magnetic field energy is not equal to the magnetic co-energy these two are different quantities but if we consider a linear BH curve then magnetic co-energy would be equal to magnetic field energy and in simple terms we can write down the magnetic co-energy as I lambda minus the area covered by the field energy okay which is given in equation 3.52 so equation 3.52 actually shows the co-energy so once we know the energy of the system and if we know the lambda versus I curve of the system we can actually find out the co-energy of the system and again using the co-energy we can also find out what is the force acting on the system so using some mathematical uh, manipulation we can deduce that the force acting on the plunger is rate of change of co-energy with displacement at constant current okay and if we see the previous analysis and this analysis we can say that the force or the torque acting on the system is minus rate of change of field energy with respect to angular displacement for constant flux linkage or rate of change of co-energy with respect to angular displacement at constant current. So equation 3.56 gives the equation of torque. So uh, the force and torque are very related quantities. So if you consider rate of change of uh, co-energy with respect to linear displacement we have force if you consider rate of change of co-energy with respect to angular displacement we have torque okay so if we want to use co-energy we should ensure that the motion of the plunger has taken in such a way that the current is held constant if we want to use field energy then we have to assume that the motion of the plunger has taken in such a way that the flux linkage lambda remains constant and this is what we can also see in some of the in the, the previous figure 3.18 so if we want to use co-energy we have to go from point A to point C if we want to assume field energy uh, if you want to use field energy for force calculation we have to go from A to D in going from A to C my current remains constant if I go from A to D my flux linkage remains constant okay so this is in short the principle and similarly we can do the analysis of a uh, doubly excited system uh, which has a rotational motion and this is actually shown over here so this was discussed in our previous webinar so I will not go into details of it but yes instead of a linear motion if we have a rotational motion then we have a simple reluctance machine shown here and these are the two extreme positions of the rotor for which we will have different values of the reluctance and then if we see here this is the in figure 3.23 we see the variation of the reluctance with the rotor angle and this is the animation which shows that how the reluctance varies as the rotor keeps on moving okay so this was covered in detail in the previous webinar so if somebody has missed that then they can please visit the webinar and have a look at it what we do now is actually we will be working with something which is known as the uh, basic virtual lab okay so these are some of the exercises that we have created and here we have the first problem which explains the principles of flux linkage and so on so if you see here we can change the relative permeability of the system we can change the input voltage we can change the number of turns we can change the mean flux path length then we have the area of the cross section and then we change the air gap so we have set all the values and once all the values are set you can see on top that three different curves are shown on the left hand side and three different curve possibilities are there on the right hand side so let's look at the input electrical power so this shows the curve of the input electrical power so here you see uh, there are three variations of the 
current that took place. So initially the current rose, went to a steady state value, then we increased the resistance, the current dropped, then we decreased the resistance, the current rose, and then we again decreased the, increased the resistance, I'm sorry, and the current reduced. So details of this are there inside the book. But here what I want to demonstrate is that as soon as I change my voltage, for example, my input electrical power changed. So if you observe the y-axis carefully, the y-axis has changed. If I change my relative permeability, okay, by certain factor, so you will see that my x-axis changes because by changing the relative permeability, I am changing the inductance. And we change in the inductance, the rise time and the fall time of the current would actually change, okay? And similarly, I can also plot here on this curve power dissipated across the resistor and then we can have the curve for the power absorbed by the inductor and same way we can see all the differential input energy, differential input, uh, differential energy dissipated across the resistor and the differential energy stored in the inductor. So whatever I vary, if I vary my air gap length, you would see that there would be variation in uh, the parameters. So if you have seen the y-axis carefully, the magnitudes changed because change in the air gap resulted in change in the inductance. And once the inductance changes, then my current's rise and fall time would change. Okay, the amount of magnetic energy that can be stored would also change. So you see all those kinds of changes. So it's kind of a demonstration. It goes hand in hand with the book. So we have seen the previous, in the book, the section uh, where we were explaining all these concepts and then we, the student and even the faculty colleagues can use this kind of an exercise to see how the entire uh, dependency of the uh, results is on the input parameters. And now what I would do is actually I would like to show you some exercises. So we have multiple exercises. Uh, based on the principles that we have discussed so far. So here we have the same plunger problem, force acting on a moving plunger, and here we give some parameters. Okay, so I define number of turns to be 1000, for example, the current through the coil to be 10 amperes, then I have the air gaps. Details of this are given in the instructor manual uh, of our uh, entire course package. So I have two air gaps and I feed their values. All the values are in millimeter. Then the width of the plunger, 150, and then the length of the plunger, let's say 100, and then the permeability of the free space. So I'll just approximate it. I'll just make an approximate value. And then the height of the plunger, it's again 10 millimeter. And then we press on calculate, okay? So here we, on on, in the first row, we have the position of the plunger. What one has to do is actually one has to calculate the inductance. And for inductance, the calculation, the formula is given here on top of the screen, okay, in step one. So one has to actually calculate that and put the values here in these uh, columns and then the program will automatically check whether the calculated values are correct or not. But what I do is just to save time, I will fill the row. And if you see here, this is how you get the variation of the inductance with the movement of the plunger. In open position, that is x is equal to zero, the plunger, the inductance was uh, uh, very high. Okay, oh sorry, x is equal to zero means the plunger is completely closed. And at certain other value of x, 150 millimeter, the plunger is far away from the remaining magnetic circuit, so the inductance is low because our air gap has increased. So then after that, we go to the next part. We are supposed to calculate the energy. So energy is half L I square. And here we have assumed the motion to be at constant current because I have given a fixed value of current, okay? So I know the inductance value at each point of the plunger. I know my current value, so I can calculate half Li square. So let's just fill up the value, and here I get my curve for the energy. Then we go to the next part. We have to find out the co-energy. So co-energy is lambda I minus the field energy. So one has to do the calculation. In the real problem, 
uh, whenever the student is working with that problem, he or she has to fill in the values and the program automatically checks. But here what we do is we will just enter the values to save time and here we see we have the co-energy. Now if you see here we have the co-energy exactly equal to the field energy because we have assumed linear motion of the plunger. Okay, and uh, sorry, not the linear motion of the plunger, I'm sorry, it's the linear BH curve of the plunger, okay, or the linear lambda versus I curve. We have not considered any kind of a magnetic saturation. So if magnetic saturation is avoided, then field energy is always equal to the co-energy. So then now let's go to the next part. We have to find out the differential inductance, okay, or derivative of the inductance with respect to position. So we have X on top and then we have the second row which is the inductance so we can easily find out the derivative a numerical derivative okay so y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 that gives us the numerical derivative so one has to fill those values over here I'll just automatically fill it and then we get the numerical derivative which is all the negative quantities that we are going to get okay and then we go to the next step and here we have to calculate the force. So in the text we have seen the force actually was given by, let's go to the part of the description that we had, okay, so the force was given by half I square rate of change of inductance with the position. So all those things we have calculated and eventually one can calculate the force. The current is constant and then the rate of change of inductance was calculated in the previous step. So I just fill in and then I get the value of the force acting on the plunger. Okay, And this is the final step of the calculation. Similarly, there is some other interesting examples uh, that we have so if we go here and we see problem number two so here is a specific case for a constant current so I'll just go through this very fast just to demonstrate the difference between a constant current motion and a constant flux linkage motion so this is a constant current motion. I gave a fixed value of current 10 ampere. So I find out the inductance. So the inductance variation is given here. It's 1.2 plus some exponential of position. Okay. Then I go, this is the inductance variation for the closed position and the open position. And then finally I find out the flux linkage. Okay. And then I go to the next part, energy. Then we calculate the co-energy and then we calculate the force. Uh, unfortunately, due to scaling, I can't have the exact figure of the force here on my screen, okay? But one can check here. So it is minus 47.58, the first value, and minus 43.05, which is the second value. Now what I do is, I take, a, take an example, which is force with constant flux linkage, okay? So if I take the constant flux linkage part, then I can see the difference. Zero. So I do that and press calculate. So let's fill some values. Then we go to next step. I calculate the current, okay? Because here now my current is not going to remain same. As my plunger changes the position, my flux linkage remains constant. So I have to calculate the current for each plunger position okay so if you see here my current does not remain constant as the plunger moves and then I go to the next step and I calculate the energy okay and then I go to the next step and I calculate the co-energy and then I go to the next step and I calculate the force so unfortunately I don't have the graph but I wanted to show you the nature of the graph if we have a constant current motion then the, the graph of the or the plot of the force would be some kind of an exponential function. Whereas if we have a constant flux linkage motion, then the force would exhibit some kind of an S-shaped function. Okay, So force as a function of position of the plunger would be 
S shaped uh, English alphabet S in case of constant flux linkage motion and in case of a constant current linkage mo constant current motion it would be kind of an exponential curve so the nature of the curve itself changes if you assume a constant flux linkage motion or a constant current linkage motion so these are some of the exercises which are also available with the entire material and here I would like to take a small break to discuss questions with you if you have any points or anything that you want to discuss with me then please uh, do let me know uh, before I uh, would finish this webinar with my last uh, presentation which is a which is a quiz on the topics that we have discussed so if you have any questions then please do ask me anything that you would like to know or you would like to ask I'm pretty sure this was a very short time to cover so much of ground but yes if you would like to have more discussions we can organize the different webinar and moreover the details are there inside our complete e-learning package so which is available so please do ask any queries or questions that you have before I show you the quiz which is the final part of this package.